Today, I reveal that I actually don't know anything about movies as I attempt to play Trivial Pursuit Silver Screen Edition. And when I say play, what I mean is read some of the cards and see if I can figure out any of the answers. You're also welcome to play along um, as well. I used to do this quite a bit, reading the cards just to myself. Um, but sadly, I left the cards in my office before the pandemic, and I haven't had access to them for the last two years. Uh, recently, though, um, I got back in. I got the cards again, and <laughs> I uh, had to go at trying to get some of the answers. Let me uh, warn you that Trivial Pursuit Silver Screen Edition is first from 1981 and second very difficult. Um, a lot of the movies mentioned here uh, make the movies reviewed on this channel look mainstream famous, so well known. There is a lot of obscure stuff here. Um, let me also say that I've never played all the way through uh, the box, um, and so the, the questions we're going to be seeing here are new to me. Um, and it'll probably be new to you. So let me know in the comments <laughs> if you got any of them. I may struggle. Uh, these, are, these are very difficult. So we'll see how it goes. I'm just going to read them. I'm going to read one card at a time. Then I'll go through all the, all the answers. Here we go. Where did the micro sub exit the body in Fantastic Voyage? Well, I've not seen this movie. But I think most likely this is some sort of 50s sci-fi uh, thriller thing. Fantastic Voyage, and it's sort of a magic school bus thing where they go inside. So where did it exit the body? I'm going to guess the nose, but that's a, that's a guess. <laughs> what Doris Day vehicle had her returning home after five years on a desert island to discover that her husband had just remarried? <laughs> well, I know, like, three Doris Day movies, and none of them involve her coming home from five years on a desert island, so... Yeah, I'm not sure I can really guess anything for that. What former Miss San Diego and Maid of California did makeup artist George Masters describe as silicone from the knees up? Yeah, like I said, these are a little bit dated questions sometimes. Um, there actually is one question somewhere in here that includes uh, the N-word. Uh, if we get to that, I will not be reading it. Um, what former Miss San Diego and Maid of California did makeup artist George Masters describe a silicone from the knees up? Miss San Diego. Hmm. 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 Well, we could guess. Maybe. I don't actually know where Marilyn Monroe grew up, but that's a feasible guess. What roulette number did Rick Blaine tell a Bar Bulgarian refugee to play twice to win enough money to get to America in Casablanca? Yeah, well, <laughs> I saw Casablanca uh, many years ago, and I sadly do not remember the roulette number in here, but maybe you do. What was the 1960 sequel to 1958's The Fly? Hmm. <laughs> the Fly again? I, I do not know this. I have not seen 1958's Fly. I've seen David Cronenberg's remake of The Fly. It's pretty cool. Who played Doris Day's husband in Move Over, Darling? So one thing to note is that in Trivial Pursuit, you often... In the real game, you go around a board and you land on a square, and that square tells you what category to pick um, on the card. Um, that means that when you do an individual card, you never do multiple questions on the same card, really. So uh, here you'll see that uh, a lot of the questions on the same card are actually about the same movie, and so you can get answers to one uh, question often contained inside of another question. So presumably this move over darling is this movie where Doris Day comes back from the desert island. I've never heard of that movie. So, let's see. Maybe we could have gotten one, <laughs> maybe. Through a tear duct is the answer to the first one. So, that's where the microsub exits the body in Fantastic Voyage, through a tear duct. Move over, darling, is indeed. What former Miss San Diego? It's Raquel Welch. Roulette number from Casablanca is 22. Return of the Fly is the sequel to The Fly. And... The husband in Move Over Darling, I didn't even bother trying to guess, James Garner. Off to a swinging start with absolute zero. I have never gotten all five questions on one card. Um, maybe we can for the first time right here. What country was the setting for Raquel, for the Raquel, Raquel Welch Jim Brown vehicle? 100 rifles. 100 rifles. 
I've never heard of this movie. I'm going to guess Ireland. What 1929 movie had Gary Cooper warning Walter Houston? If you want to call me that, smile. If you want to call me that, smile. 1929 Gary Cooper, John Houston movie. Ah, man, that's just a little too early for me to know with Gary Cooper. Shoot, I don't know that. Who did Elizabeth Taylor marry after divorcing Richard Burton for the second time? Okay, well, I have some serviceable guesses here, but I, I don't know Elizabeth Taylor's life well enough to know the order that she married. But um, let's think about this. Um, uh, I guess we'll guess Mike Todd uh, because it's not Eddie Fisher. So we'll, we'll go with Mike Todd. Who said in The Great Muppet Caper, I'm not hemming it up. I'm trying to save this movie. I guess Kermit. <laughs> what film propelled Catherine Ross to stardom? Catherine Ross is presumably the name of a character in the movie, not an actress. Um, Catherine Ross. So is this the name of... This is not... This is not all about Eve, but it, could it be A Star is Born? Could it be? Could that, we'll, we'll guess that it's A Star is Born. Who played Agatha Christie in Agatha? Yeah, and I don't, I don't even... I'm, I, <laughs> it's hard to even guess because what era a movie is this? I don't, I don't even know. So who played Agatha Christie in Agatha? Um, uh, man, who would even make sense if there were newer I might say maybe like Judy Dench or somebody but um, that that wouldn't have flown at the time uh, I don't know let's see we may have done a little bit better here so the 100 rifles uh, uh, <laughs> does not look so good 100 rifles was Mexico not Ireland the Virginian was the 1929 Gary Cooper film yeah that makes sense who did Elizabeth Taylor marry after divorcing Richard Burton for the second time was not Mike Todd it was John Warner Miss Piggy it's from the Muppet Caper. The Graduate. Catherine Ross. The Graduate. What? She, okay, so that, is that the actress who plays Elaine? Yes. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> yeah. Um... And Vanessa Redgrave played Agatha Christie. I guess that kind of makes sense, I guess. Um, well, dreadful. <laughs> Let's see if we can do any better here. What city's rooftops did Mary Poppins dance, flit, and fly over? London, isn't it? I haven't seen that for a long time. What film ended with the line, Now what's all this crap about no movie tonight? Ooh. That sounds extremely familiar. Could it be the last picture show? That would kind of make sense. What happens at the end of that movie? I don't really remember. Decent guess, maybe. How old was Judy Garland when she made The Wizard of Oz? Um, not very. I'm going to guess 16. What first did John C. Rice and May Irwin perform on screen in 1896? What first did John C. Rice and May Irwin perform? Go with a kiss, perhaps. What Albert Finney film marked Liza Minnelli's first starring role? Oh, no. Oh, shoot. I... Oh, no. I don't think I can remember this, but... Who soared to the ceiling when he laughed as Uncle Albert in Mary Poppins? I do vaguely remember this, but I don't know who that actor is. London, indeed. What film, now that's all this crap about no movies tonight, is Mr. Roberts. I have no idea what that movie is. Judy Garland was 17, so close. A Kiss, indeed. Um, Charlie Bubbles was 
the Albert Finney film that was Liza Minnelli's first starring role. I have no idea what that is. And Ed Wynn. That, that makes sense. It was in Mary Poppins. Well, as you can see, very difficult. A lot of these I think, man, I should know this. And then you look at the answer and you think, what the heck is that? <laughs> um, we'll do a few more cards here, see if I can pull any, any good ones out. What city's fire department battled the blaze in the towering inferno? I don't know this. I should probably know this. San Francisco. Um, what 1968 fantasy had Max Frost becoming the first hippie president of the U.S.? I want to watch this movie. 1968 film about a hippie president. I do not know. What creator of The Great Dictator once observed when the gods go slumming, they visit the earth? Well, the creator of The Di Great Dictator was uh, Charles Chaplin, so. Um, what was put in the congressman's drinking water to trip them into lowering the voting age in Wild in the Streets? So Wild in the Streets must be this movie, this 1968 film <laughs> where a hippie becomes, and then what was put in the Congress drinking water? I mean, LSD, I guess, you would assume. Who narrated How the West Was Won? Oh, shoot. I have seen How the West Was Won. It is narrated. Oh, man. Oh, man. This one. Oh. Uh. I'm going to guess Spencer Tracy. Oh, I'm curious who it actually is. Who played President Max Frost in Wild in the Streets? Guess Henry Fonda. <laughs> San Francisco is Towering Inferno. I thought I sort of remembered that. Wild in the Streets, indeed. Charlie Chaplin, yeah, creator of The Great Dictator. LSD is indeed what was in the congressman's drinking water. Who narrated How the West Is Won? It was indeed Spencer Tracy. There we go. Christopher Jones. Oh, he played the president in uh, Wild in the Streets. I think we, we watched, we did a Christopher Jones movie on the channel not too long ago, so maybe there was some chance. Hey, four, I think, on that card. That's pretty good. Um, do a few more. <laughs> um, what number... What number room did Marion Crane take her last shower in? So this is a reference to the film Psycho. Vivian Lee playing Marion Crane, I assume. What was the room number? I do not know this, but let's guess six. <laughs> what film offered the understatement, mother, what is the phrase? Isn't mother, what is the phrase? Isn't quite herself today. This has got to be Psycho as well, I would assume. What actor's face appeared on the covers of Life and Newsweek, less than a week before The Godfather's premiere. What actor's face appeared? Well, can guess that it would be Marlon Brando, I guess. I'm not exactly sure what the connection is here, besides that it would just be some actor who was in the movie, unless somebody was in the news otherwise or died or something like that. I don't know. What was Norman Bates' hobby in Psycho? Um, it's stuffing animals. Um, the word for that uh, escapes me right now, but stuffing animals. Um, taxidermy, there we go. What Hitchcock film took seven days and 45 camera setups to shoot 45 seconds of bloodletting? That's also referring to the shower scene in Psycho. Who played Chief Brody in Jaws 2? Well, I guess it probably wasn't Roy Scheider who plays Chief Brody in Jaws. So we'll see who it was. One... Oh, okay, she was in room number one, apparently. Psycho, Marlon Brando's face, taxidermy, Psycho, and it is Roy Scheider. So look at that, except for, we got all of them except for the first one, because who knows, who knows the room number? Warming up a little bit here, warming up a little bit here. Maybe you guys know, knew all these ones too, I don't know, but feeling a little bit better after a, a, some, a rough start. Let's, let's do a few more. What 1943 flag waver put Humphrey Bogart in The Merchant Marine on the Murmansk Run. Oh, shoot. Um, I'm going to... Well, I'll just guess 49th Parallel, even though I don't think that can be correct. What 1945 movie saw Ray Milland thrown out of a nightclub for stealing a woman's purse? Uh... 
Um, uh, that's that can't be uh, the the drinking one, can it? The Billy Wilder film, whatever that's called. Um, oh no, maybe it is. Uh, the long, the long, the long longest weekend. There we go. Or yeah, the longest weekend. I don't think that's the. I think that's too early. But was Ray Milland in that? I, I think he is. So maybe. Uh, who noted? If at first you don't succeed, try, try again, then quit. No use being a fool about it. That sounds extremely familiar. If at first you don't. Huh. Could that be a Holly Golightlyism? Maybe. I don't think it is, though. Maybe. Hmm. I'm not sure about this one. What occupation did Marlon Brando have in The Young Lions and Greta Garbo have in Two-Faced Woman? Marlon Brando in The Young Lions, a movie I do not know, and Greta Garbo in Two-Faced Woman, a movie I do not know. They shared an occupation. Oh, so it's not going to be like... It's going to be something that a man or a woman would have done back in the day, so... The Young Lions, Two-Faced Woman... You would think maybe Zookeeper, but Two-Faced Woman, well, let's go with Zookeeper. I don't know. What character have Reginald Owen, Henry Winkler, and Mr. Magoo all played? Uh, embarrassing admission here. I don't know who Mr. Magoo is. <laughs> is, that, is it a person? Is it a monkey? I don't know. Um, what character have Reginald Owen, Henry Winkler? Henry Winkler, that's very familiar. I, I, Henry Winkler, is, wasn't he in like uh, some television show? Um, what have they all played? Um, okay, I don't, I don't know. The last one, at least. Who portrayed Charles Shaughnessy in Ryan's Daughter? This is, is probably uh, Montgomery Clift is the main guy in Ryan's Daughter. We just have to hope it's not the other guy <laughs> in Ryan's Daughter. I cannot remember who plays it. Pretty good movie. Um, you know, David Lean was sort of famous for making big, epic, uh, adventurous things. Um, you know, like uh, Lawrence of Arabia or uh, Dr. Zhivago, things like that. And Ryan's Daughter had the runtime and the cast to sort of be that, but it's actually a completely different movie. It's a much smaller film. It's kind of a more intimate, romantic drama sort of thing, much more akin to his early work before he was doing epics when he was making movies in England and audiences were really confused about this and the film was a bit of a flop because they were expecting something epic and they did not get it except in runtime. But uh, Ryan's Daughter is actually quite a good movie, I think. Anyway. Okay. The 1943 flag waver with Bogey was action in the North Atlantic. I've never heard of that. The 1945 movie with Ray Milland is, oh, it's The Lost Weekend, not The Long Weekend. Right. Duh. Okay. But I'm, I'm pretty close there. Who noted if you first don't succeed, try, try again, then quit? That was W.C. Fields. Interesting. What occupation did they both have? A ski instructor. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Henry Winkler, this one. Ebenezer Scrooge. I should look up who Mr. Magoo is at some point. And it's not Montgomery Cliff. It's Robert Mitchum. Ah. Uh, painful. 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 Shoot. Ah. Okay. Let's do maybe two more. That one wasn't so good. I should have quit while I was ahead. Oh, got overconfident, I guess. I don't know. Let's see here. Um, what 1973 film saw George Seagal in Venice reminiscing about his love life? Um, 1973 Venice films. That's approximately the right era for... Uh, uh, Death in Venice, although Dirk Bogard is the main character in that, but maybe George Seagal is in it too. It also is sort of approximately the right year for that. What's the, th that movie with the girl in the red raincoat, whatever that's called, that horror movie? It's not very good. Watched it a while ago. Uh, 1973, not sure. Ah, shoot. What MGM musical western had Betty Hutton and Howard Keel singing Anything You Can Do, I Can Do Better? I Can Do Anything Better Than You. Musical Western. I've heard of this song. I feel like this song was reused in a lot of different things. MGM Musical Western. Well, 
you know, the, 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 the musical Western that everybody knows is Paint Your Wagon, obviously, in which Clint Eastwood sings. <laughs> Anything you can do, I can do better. I mean, I guess we'll just, we'll just guess that it's Oklahoma. Could be. I've seen Oklahoma the play once, but it was a long time ago. How old was Luke Skywalker when he bolted the burned out farm to battle the Empire in Star Wars? That's a good question. How old was Luke Skywalker? Not very old. 19? I'm not sure. What 1973 George Lucas film was a cinematic, recre <laughs> cinematic recreation of his adolescence? Probably American Graffiti. What Star Wars co-star played wise guy racer Bob Falfa in American Graffiti? Star Wars co-star. Um, I've actually never seen American Graffiti. I, have no I don't know who's in it. Um, uh, I guess Alec Guinness. I don't think he was in American Graffiti. I don't know. Um, okay. This 1973 film with George Seagal in Venice is Bloom in Love. I've never heard of that movie. MGM Musical with Annie Get Your Gun. Okay. Jane, oh, I skipped one question accidentally, but I don't think I want to read it anyway. <laughs> the answer was 38 inches. Uh, how old was Luke Skywalker? 20, missed it by one year, not too bad. American Graffiti, indeed. And Harrison Ford was in American Graffiti. Probably you guys would have known that, but... I don't know anything about that movie. Okay. We'll do um, this one and one more. If, if you guys are having fun, maybe I'll do this again, but who knows? I'm having fun at least. What 1933 musical was set partly in the South America and started the karaoke dance craze? The only musical I know from 1933 is Gold Diggers of 1933, which is actually a great movie. South America karaoke dance craze, you would guess that this is maybe a Carmen Miranda thing, but I don't know what that would be. What 1949 chronicled the efforts of the 918th bomber group? Let's guess maybe, what's that movie called? 30 Minutes Over Tokyo or whatever? Um, what Jack Lemmon movie was first shown in Paris on November 10th, 1956? Jack Lemmon's pretty young in 56. Is this a Billy Wilder movie? From 56? I was going to think, first of all, that it was going to be uh, Irma LaDuce, but that's from, like, way later. 1956. I... Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um... Who ran off with $40,000 in Psycho? Oh, more Psycho questions. We did pretty well in the first round, but who actually got the money? It's like it ends up being buried in the car or something like that. Maybe the police detective gets it. I'm not going to be able to name the character. What author wrote the screenplay for the Beatles' Yellow Submarine? <laughs> that is an interesting piece of trivia that I do not know. We can, make a, we can attempt to make a guess here. It's got to be someone kind of groovy. What author wrote the screenplay for Yellow Submarine? I don't know, maybe Gore Vidal. <laughs> um, what role did Peter Boyle play in Young Frankenstein? I don't know, and believe it or not, I've actually never seen Young Frankenstein. <laughs> I <laughs> want to watch it sometime, but... Okay, the 1933 musical was Flying Down to Rio. The 1949 movie was 12 O'Clock High. 1956 Jack Lemmon film was Irma LaDuce. I didn't realize that was from 56 because it's in color... Which is totally, I guess that's not a surprise for 56, but later Billy Wilder Jack Lemmon films like The Apartment would not be in color. So that's interesting. That's a pretty good movie, though, Armella Deuce. Um, Marion Crane ran off with 40,000. Oh, okay. That's the main girl. I thought they meant who got the money in the end, or maybe nobody gets it. I don't really remember. Who wrote the screenplay? Eric uh, Segal. I don't know who that is. And who did he. Uh, Peter Boyle play in Young Frankenstein, the monster. Okay. One more. We'll see if this is a totally wasted video or if it's fun. Who knows? What 1977 James Bond flick took the super agent to the Great Pyramid? Ah. Uh, I've actually seen quite a few James Bond movies, but I have not seen this one. I've goes to the Pyramid, the Great Pyramid. 
1977, we could be in the Roger Moore era, but I've seen most of the Roger Moore James Bond movies, and he does not go to the Great Pyramid. A lot of people don't realize that they were actually making Roger Moore James Bond films at the same time that they were making um, Sean Connery ones still. Um, so I assume this is a Sean Connery. Um... Um, hmm. I am not sure. I should be able to pull up some decent guess from that era, but all the ones I remember are ones I've seen, basically, and this isn't any of those, so I don't know. Um, what film could have been retitled Romeo and Juliet with Switchblades? Are they talking about West Side Story? What two Julies competed for the Best Actress Oscar in 1965? Two Julies. Julie Andrews, Julie Christie. Right? Sound of Music, Dr. Zhivago. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Which West Side Story gang boasted the members Baby John, A-Rab, Joy Boy, and The Big Deal? Well, <laughs> believe it or not, I'm going to look like a fool here, but I, I have never seen West Side Story in any version, and I... The, the Sharks? Is that one? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, let's go, let's go with the Sharks. <laughs> What play was the West Side Story drawn from? It looks like I was right about the first one because these are all connected. So Romeo and Juliet with Switchblades must indeed be West Side Story. So, Who portrayed Bernardo, leader of the Sharks, in West Side Story? Oh, shoot. And I, was I right about the Sharks, too? Nice. Um, but who is actually in West Side Story? I don't know. So let's see. James Bond was the spy who loved me. I've not seen that movie. West Side Story, Julie Andrews, Julie Christie. Completely spot on there, I think. The Jets. Ah, oh, dang it. <laughs> Romeo and Juliet and George Chikiris. Don't know who that is. So, like I said, a lot of fun. You can actually pick up um, Trivial Pursuit, usually for very cheap. I, I got all the ones I have. Ooh, almost dropped all the cards there. I got them from the Goodwill long ago. Um, and you, they had a bunch of different editions there, real cheap. Um, it can be good fun. Uh, even the, the normal version can be can be fun. There's a lot of goofy old questions that don't really make sense anymore. Uh, the Silver Screen Edition is great. There are questions about movies that you literally cannot find on IMDb. Uh, they have some really obscure uh, stuff in here. Um, hopefully that was somewhat fun. Uh, if, if it was at all, I mean, I <laughs> would love to, to keep doing it, but uh, who knows? So um, hopefully that's a fun little bonus video.